Hello families, my name is Tana Spawner of Island Moon Doula. I am a certified birth and postpartum doula through Birth Arts International and a Douglas College certified childbirth educator. I've been serving families in Port Alberni and our surrounding West Coast communities for about seven years. And I am also an approved doula with the Aboriginal Doula Grant Program. So welcome to What to Expect in the Fourth Trimester. The fourth trimester is the first three months after you birth your baby. There tends to be a lot of emphasis on pregnancy and birth preparation, and that is wonderful. But what about after your baby comes? It is just as important to plan for your postpartum. Good planning and preparation can help new parents navigate this time more confidently and more smoothly. How I'd like to break it down is through what I call the F's of postpartum. So the first F is falling in love, then physical changes, fatigue, frustration and fussiness, feelings, father partner, fertility, family and friends, and lastly, freedom. So let's talk about falling in love. Your baby is ready to bond with you right away. You can encourage this bonding with lots of skin to skin with both mother and partner. The hormones exchanged between parents and baby, especially the love hormone oxytocin, enhance this bonding. It is also okay not to feel the love right away. Your body has just gone through an incredible experience and sometimes it just takes time. Your baby will still benefit from this closeness and in time, the love will form. Physical changes. There are many physical changes going on after you have your baby. Remember, it took nine months to grow your baby, so it's going to take time for your body to heal, adapt, and return to its pre-pregnancy self. And I say pre-pregnancy self lightly because this can also look different for many. Six weeks is just a recommendation, but I can't stress enough that it's normal for it to take much longer. Every body and baby are different and shouldn't be placed into the same checkbox. Uterine contractions. After you give birth, your uterus is working very hard to heal and return to its original self. It needs to heal because the release of the placenta leaves an approximate plate-sized wound on the wall of your uterus. Again, this is reason to not jump back into everyday life right away and to take the time to let your body heal. The uterus continues to contract after birth to shrink back and prevent postpartum hemorrhaging. You may not always feel the contractions, but many people feel them when breastfeeding. This is because nipple stimulation triggers oxytocin release, which in turn creates uterine contractions. With every birth, these breastfeeding contractions tend to be felt stronger. Your care provider may offer you pain medication to help you manage. Perineal discomfort and pain. If you had any tearing or an episiotomy, there will be varying degrees of discomfort and pain in your postpartum. Follow your care provider's recommendation for the best possible healing. Again, don't do too much too soon. Listen to your body. If there was no vaginal trauma, it is still important for there, it is still, sorry, it is still normal for there to be swelling and bruising. Using your peribottle, patsicles, sitz bath, and pain relief medication will facilitate all degrees of pain and healing. Lochia, whether you gave birth vaginally or by cesarean, you will have discharge from your vagina for roughly four to six weeks after your baby is born. For the first few days, it is dark red in color with some blood clots. For the next week or so, it changes to a waterier, pinker, pinker, or brownish in color. From there, it will turn to a creamy color. You may notice an increase of lochia when you get up in the morning or are physically active or even while breastfeeding. It should also not be foul in odor, but more of a musty menstrual smell. Rest changes. Your breasts may not even feel like they belong to you in that first week or so with all the changes they undergo. Feeding your baby on demand and skin to skin is the best recommendation to ensure adequate milk production and to prevent engorgement. Engorgement is an overproduction of milk, which is very common until your supply adjusts to your baby's needs. 
Your breasts will be large, feel hard and sore. Speak to your care provider or doula for tips and tricks on how to relieve engorgement. Constipation and hemorrhoids. I always encourage my clients to address their bowels in pregnancy to ensure their first movements postpartum are easier. Keep up with the fiber and fluids. Hemorrhoids can make bowel movements more difficult. Again, speak to your care provider or doula for recommendations. Surgical recovery from cesarean birth. It is so important to follow your care provider's recommendations for healing following your belly birth. It will ensure your comfort and quicker healing. Hire a doula, ask friends and family to help around the house and with other children for those first few weeks so you get the rest your body needs to heal. Even, the outside, even when the outside incision is healed, there are many layers that we can't see that take much longer to heal. I'm going to show you a quick demo of the anatomy of a cesarean. Now I'm going to show you a quick demo on the anatomy of a cesarean section. Because it's a common procedure, not everyone realizes how extensive of a surgery it is and why it is so important to respect the recommended recovery and healing time. There are seven layers that need to be gone through to birth your baby. The first layer is the skin layer you have here. There will be an incision along your bikini line. Then we have the fat layer. Again, there will be an incision made. Then we have the fascia, the fibrous layer. And then we reach the muscle layer. It is not cut, but separated vertically. Next layer is the peritoneum. Again, it will be vertical, not horizontal. Then we reach the uterus. The bladder is in front of the uterus and a bit lower, so it will need to be slightly pulled aside to get to the uterus. There will be an incision made into the uterus. From there, we reach the amniotic sac. The amniotic sac will be broken. And from there, your baby will be born. So you can see all the different layers that need to heal and repair after the birth of your baby. And why it is so important take that time to rest and recover. Fatigue, it makes everything worse. You won't be getting long blocks of sleep in those early weeks and months. So how do you get enough sleep? Well, you aim to get your usual amount in a 24 hour period. This can look like naps when your baby sleeps, in the morning meeting your baby's needs, then going back to bed, go to bed earlier in the evening, and you and your partner can sleep in shifts, so each of you get chunks of sleep. Keeping your baby close in the night also helps to ensure you get more sleep. Lastly, following your baby's sleep schedule instead of trying to force them onto yours in those early days will keep the frustration minimal and the sleep more plentiful. Frustration and fussiness. Babies need to be close to you. This is instinctual and not manipulative. For those first few months, they want to feel the warmth and security of the womb. Their needs and wants are the same thing, and it is our job as parents to meet their demands. It can be tiring and frustrating. So how do we cope through this? We try to get as much sleep as we can. We ask for help in our day-to-day -day and in the night. And I love a really great infant carrier. An infant carrier can meet the baby's needs while allowing parents to be hands-free. Feelings. In this slide, you will see my three children. I may look peaceful holding my new baby, but my older daughter just finished telling me she wants her sister to go back in. In my brain, I'm like, 
how in the F am I going to do this? Again, just another F of the postpartum. Um, in the other photo um, is my son, less than a week old, and I legit have the whole kitchen and bathroom on my bed. Again, I just love him so much, but I'm like, how do I do this? And why did I do this? It's normal to feel these things. It's normal to feel completely overwhelmed one minute, then utterly and blissfully in love with everyone the next. Resting, asking for help, and patience with yourself helps you cope with all the feels. It's normal in days three to day five postpartum to have all these feelings amplified. It's the shift in hormones, the crash of adrenaline or that birth high, and the lack of sleep all balled into one. This can be the beginning of what is termed the baby blues. Again, rest, good foods, support, and lots of skin to skin with your baby help you to move through this more easily. Postpartum depression and or anxiety is something different than the baby blues and may require the support and guidance of others and other healthcare professionals. Always reach out to your health nurse or care provider if your feelings are becoming increasingly worse and or disruptive to your everyday life. Father or partner. It's important that fathers and partners bond with their baby too. They also can enjoy and benefit from skin to skin, baby wearing and newborn care. Don't forget dads and partners will need to recover to some degree after the birth as well. It is important they ask for help, get sleep, engage in self-care, and stay well-nourished in order to keep up to the demands of an infant and caring for the mother, household chores, and possibly other children. Fertility. It is important for couples to try and make time for one another, but it's important to know that exclusively breastfeeding isn't 100% reliable birth control. Speak with your care provider about breastfeeding safe birth control options. If you are not breastfeeding, ovulation should return approximately six weeks postpartum. Family and friends, they all want to meet the new baby, but it's important to not get burnt out in these early days and weeks from too many visitors. Discuss boundaries with your partner and enforce them. It's important that you get the rest, establish breastfeeding and heal from your birth than it is to be hosting visitors. When they do come, assign them a task or two, such as dog walking, folding a basket of laundry, bathing an old, older child. There's a zillion tasks that can be tackled. If they offer to bring or pick up anything, ask for food or meals. Food is the best gift. Also, keep those visits short. If baby is sleeping, you should be resting or sleeping too. Freedom. You may be like, what freedom? <laughs> well, you are free from the limitations of being pregnant. It's quite glorious to lay on your stomach after not being able to, or to not have round ligament pain or frequent nighttime urination. Life does become a little bit more complicated. It may take longer to get out the door, but it is doable. Just give yourself more time to accomplish these things. It is worth noting that if you are breastfeeding, that outings will become easier the more comfortable you get with feeding in public or out and about. And fun, it does get easier, I promise. Every day is a new day with a new adventure. Your baby will change so fast and milestones can be so exciting. Some of the best advice given to me is to find the sense of humor in everything. Because quite honestly, laughter can be the best medicine. Lastly, you've got this. Thank you so much for joining me and please always feel free to contact me for more information, guidance, or support.